Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to be talking about adding oral habit elimination to your list or menu of services for your younger patients, your twos, your threes, your fours, your fives, your sixes, your sevens and older, but mostly I'm thinking more like under seven. So these are kids that are a little bit too young for real ortho, but they're not too young for oral habit elimination therapy. Um, So let's talk about that. What does that look like? How do you integrate it? How does it build revenue? What kind of revenue are we looking at? And I'm going to not get into the weeds too much with this. Um, If you want more information about specific products that are out there to do this, you'll want to do one of two things. Either access my YouTube site. Um, There's almost a thousand how-to videos on pretty much every product that's out there that's dental and ortho ortho related. Um, The YouTube site is Straight Smile Solutions Ortho. You can find it. Um, I've got links everywhere. If you can't find it, go to my website, Straight Smile Solutions. Send me a message and I'll send you the link. The other good resource, specifically going into the details and into the weeds and about products would be my book. Um, again, you can find this um, at Amazon, or if you want to direct link, go to my website, Straight Smile Solutions, click on book, and it'll take you right there. And price point's only $9.99, $9.99 for Kindle, a little bit more for paperback. All right, so this is how I would get started. First of all, if you are a gen- especially if you're a pediatric dentist, you should 100% be doing this. This is a no-brainer, and this is your, there's no one else doing this, so this is actually your responsibility. I don't think up until this point, most pediatric dentists just they kind of did the whole like sticker positive reinforcement. Yes, you should stop sucking your thumb. Yes, you should get rid of your passy. But there was nothing beyond that, you know, a little bit rah-rah. But there didn't build revenue. Um, and ultimately, a lot of parents struggle with these things. And, you know, just being a parent myself, I can tell you straight out, my now 15-year-old son, when he was one and two, he had a severe bottle habit and I was absolutely mortified because I knew this was bad for his occlusion and my husband and I are both dentists we knew it was bad but we couldn't eliminate it we tried trust me we tried everything tears like not eating I mean we didn't do bottles at night he got water at night it was just during the day but he was always wanting to suck on a bottle and it was very 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 difficult and eventually we did manage to get rid of it at age three but here was this really really tall kid i mean he was way older than he looked for his age running around with the bottle hanging out of his mouth all the time and it was it was embarrassing so you know had i known about some of these appliances and and options i'm sure i would have done it you know as a parent i was mortified going to the playgrounds knowing this and even worse than i knew better you know but it was the only way i could get rest at night, you know, having my child suck on this. I mean, I was, I was tired. I was pregnant. I was working full time and I was exhausted and it just, yeah. So you get the idea if you're a, you know, I'm not trying to mom shame at all. Cause I've totally been there. Um, okay. So great way to get started for this. If you're every kid between age, I'd say two and seven, if they're, two, they're not quite ready for an ortho screening and evaluation, but they are ready for an SDB and oral habit screening and evaluation. So I'd start off with a questionnaire. And there are a lot of questionnaires that are already made by various companies that sell these products for access to those questionnaires. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna name the, the companies because depending on how I name them, some of them like to be very litigious. So I have to be very careful about what I say about some of them. I like some of them. I like some of their products. Some of them, I don't like the people that are behind the products, um, but their products are decent. So you'll have to either read my book or go into my YouTube videos to dig up more on that. But they have different sleep disordered breathing um, questionnaires that are branded. I also have my own that I think is very well done and it really digs into habits a little bit more. So mine is available on my store on my website. If you are a client an actual subscription client of mine you can have any of my handouts any of my paperwork any of my documents for free you just got to let me know you want it and we'll give it to you Um, otherwise the you can order it from our store it's only twenty dollars for a copy of it Um, so you want to start with that every single patient from age two to seven should be getting screened um, regardless of how they present regardless of what the parents say it's just a great baseline and you're going to start finding things that you didn't know may become problems and it'll start to open up a lot of great conversations with the parents um from there another way to get patients in and this is just brilliant now i mean post covid this is one of the most positive things that came out of post covid is the whole virtual consult thing which was still really kind of ambiguous um 
before there was a lot of asynchronous virtual consults that was happening with the direct to consumer aligner companies, but now there's much more options, many more options for synchronous virtual consults and asynchronous. And again, I have tons of content on that on my YouTube, so you can go into that. But what it's literally parents trying to eliminate thumb sucking, parents trying to eliminate pacifier sucking is a huge Google search term. And parents really don't realize that's directly connected to dentistry and orthodontics. So it is correct, it's connected to everything from speech and language issues, myofunctional issues, airway issues, behavior issues, all of this is all intergrained because as this habit becomes really more reinforced, other issues happen with the change of the growth of the, of the mouth, of the shape of the face. So it is really, really important to eliminate these habits and for you to fully understand the why behind it. And if you're looking for additional books or literature on it, um, check out, I think there's one called Tongue Tie, um, there's another one called Breathe. You should definitely check out some of these books about that too. So I love the idea of doing a synchronous or asynchronous virtual consult and doing marketing even on Facebook about it um, or you know, writing blogs and letting patients that either are your own patients or prospective patients connect with you or your team through synchronous or asynchronous consults. These of course would be totally free, but it's a great way to just meet the patient, meet the kid, ask a few questions. Um, and introduce them to your team, even if they don't even have to come into the office for this and answer questions. Um, a lot of times, you know, you gotta pull the trigger right when the, when, when the irons are hot in the fire. So um, I love that idea. Okay, so once you got them to fill out the screening questionnaire and you maybe talked and taken a look at their bite, what do you wanna do then? So first of all, we wanna make sure that they understand some of the complications of having oral habits now, normally, if you discontinue an oral habit like thumb sucking, passy sucking, I mean, there's so many different habits. There's nail biting, there's people that suck on their stuffed animals or blankets. Um, you need to find out what the habit is, when it's occurring. You got to be a little bit of a detective because patients, not so much two, three and four year olds, but older kids can be very secretive with their habits. The parents may have no idea that habits are happening anymore. And a lot of times parents are very defensive when you bring it up. They're like, no, she is not sucking her thumb. And you're looking at it going, oh, I think she is. You know, cause I can look at a bite and be like, there's a habit. And I work with doctors all the time and I'll be they'll like, no, the parent says there's not a habit. No, there's a habit. And then we find out, yep, there's a habit. Patients will go in the closet, suck their thumb. They'll go under the covers and suck their thumb. The parents have no idea. So you gotta find out, is it happening because they're bored? Is it happening because they're scared? Is it happening because they're, I don't know, you know, like sad? So you gotta find out when it's happening and is it happening at night? Is it happening at nap time? Is it happening at school? And really have the parents help you investigate it. Um, once a habit has been fully reinforced with muscle memory, the tongue, the cheeks, everything like that, especially the tongue, it has muscle memory, it is now imprinted and it's gonna be much harder to get rid of because now, even if we took that finger, thumb, or you know, um, blankie or a pacifier or stuffed animal away, now we've got an open bite that's been created. And now the tongue and the musculature is going to adapt around that, which really means mouth breathing, often tongue thrusting, and other things are gonna become imprinted. And now it's gonna be significantly, it becomes an exponential problem. It's gonna get exponentially worse because these other adaptations to adapt around the open bite that now started actually keep getting worse and they'll eventually cause the face to grow in an abnormal, you know, direction. And I know parents are like, what, what are you talking about? This little harmless thumb sucking at age two is going to cause a long-term facial distortion. Yeah, it can. We need to get rid of it now. So usually if you eliminate the habit fully by age three or four, the muscle, the teeth and the bite and the bones will rebound, assuming that it hasn't become too much of a problem and we don't have muscle memory. So I can't make a promise, but it definitely is a good chance it'll just go away, you know? But once we get to age five and up, less likely. By then you're gonna need to have some type of appliance or some type of other intervention um, or, you know, early phase one braces. So it gets significantly more expensive for the parent the longer the habit happens. The longer they let it go on, the worse the bite gets, the more expensive the parent is gonna have and the ultimate sequelae could be, you know, crooked teeth, narrow arches, proclined teeth, buck teeth, um, longer and more complicated orthodontic treatment, two-phase orthodontic treatment, possible jaw surgery, possible extractions, um, possible needing of an expander, um, anterior open bite, might need a tongue crib, might need a thumb crib, smaller airways, 
smaller airways can mean ADHD, um, lower grades. So there's all different directions this can cause, and we can't really predict what direction this will go. Impacted teeth, a long kind of dog looking facial height with that kind of dog face where they're kind of can't close their mouth. We've all seen those kids where they're walking around with their mouth hanging open. That is a sleep disorder breathing look. I see these kids all the time, especially one time I went to Disney World and I was, I taught my kids, I'm like, ooh, long face, you know, or ooh, sleep disorder breathing face. And my kids even know how to look for it now. They're like, oh wow, she has SDB, he has SDB, he has that oral habit. You know, they can see it from, you know, 20 feet away in a kid, it's there. And you know, I can't believe how many big kids are sucking their thumbs, you know, 10 year olds at Disney World, give me a break. But anyways, um, so first step, like I said, is to examine the patient. If the kid is less than age five or even five and under, I don't even recommend full orthodontic records because this isn't necessarily orthodontics. This is just habit elimination. So you don't have to take a pano or a ceph. That's too uncomfortable or a full set of intraoral photos with um, retractors. Forget it. That's too traumatic for a little kid. So I recommend just making it super fun. What I used to do is, is have the patient make a funny face and I call it an alligator funny face where they're gonna, of course, they're gonna wash their hands, stick their hands, or the parent could do it, but even fun, more fun if the kid does it, stick their fingers in their mouth and make a funny face where they go, mm, and they spread their cheeks and they bite like an alligator and show me their alligator bite with their cheeks spread out and I snap a picture, because I can see a lot with that. And that's really fun, right? And it doesn't hurt because the kid is controlling the cheeks. Um, and then if I can print, give the kid a copy of it too, because they're like, wow. And if you need it, you know, it's kind of like a tell show do thing. So make sure you, if you have copies and the parents are okay with the releases, you have your releases signed, your photo release, make an album or something. You can do this at Shutterstock or, um, not Shutterstock, Shutterfly or one of these um, photo sites, you know, where you can make photo books. So you can even just do it at like CVS and get a few pictures of a bunch of kids that have done this, you know, so they can be like, oh, this kid just did it. This kid did it. So do it like this kid because you want to see what they did and just copy it, right? And that way, we, at least we have a documentation of how they started. Um, also getting a baseline SDB or habit questionnaire for documentation just to open up the conversation. That's all you really need to start. Um, from there, like I said, if under age five, often if you get started early, you can totally eliminate the malocclusion just by eliminating the habit. So like I said, you got to dig into the why behind it. When is it happening? Is it because they're insecure? Is it because they're sad? So you want to really Anxiety is the main thing, and now we're getting to the whole psychosocial stuff, but finding out when it's happening, having the parents keep a journal or a log of when it's happening, have the patient keep a, help them out, telling them when it's happening. It shouldn't be punished. They shouldn't be punished at age five, but just saying, yeah, mom, I did suck my thumb. Here's why. If you, sometimes if you create awareness and replace that insecurity or that the way that they handle the insecurity with something else, you know, maybe they want to hug their stuffed animal, or maybe you want to get a really fun weighted blanket. That really helps, you know, that they can lay over them, um, you know, instead of sucking their thumb, find another way to cope with the insecurity that's not involved putting something in their mouth and replace that habit with another more healthy habit. So that's a good idea. Um, you can also use positive reinforcement, whatever works for the kid, reward them with stickers or tokens uh, for the days that they refrain from putting their fingers in their mouth and after they get a certain amount of stickers or tokens. Um, they can replace it for a price that they want. So, and you can even do this. It doesn't have to be the parents that do it. I mean, I know plenty of orthodontists and pediatric dentists that do the prizes themselves. I mean, it's just simple stuff, $5 stuff from Amazon. You know, they have like a prize chest. And, you know, once the kids get 30 tokens or whatever, um, they can come into the office and redeem it for a prize. I mean, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, it's really exciting. And I think my own, my own pediatric dentist did stuff like that. I remember the treasure chest they had. And I was... The whole reason I'm a dentist now is because how fun it was to go to the pediatric dentist. So I loved going. I don't care if I had to get work done, get teeth pulled. I love going because it was so into positive reinforcements. Um, so of course, praise and encouragement and really remembering that this is a family, this is a family achievement. When little Johnny stops sucking his thumb for a couple months, it's a family celebration. So if you've got older siblings, you wanna get the older siblings in on the celebration because otherwise they're just teasing, right? So if you let the older siblings know that there's a reward for them when little Johnny succeeds, they're going to be really positive to the kid, whether it's a trip to the ice cream shop or to the amusement park or depending on your budget, it could be something very small. Um, that really, really helps too. 
If all this fails, I have another great idea, uh, which is, I call it the long t-shirt method. So this one works really, really well. You go buy a, either if dad's a big guy, you want to go buy like an extra large t-shirt from Ross or Target or whatever, cheap, cheap, cheap one, you know, with long sleeves and tie knots in the sleeves and have the child. And you can have the child, like, it's not a punishment to sleep in the long t-shirt with the knots in the sleeves because you're going to tie a knot in the end so they can't stick their hands in their mouth at night. Um, and they sleep in it, but you can have them decorate it, tie dye it, use fabric pens, make it fun. And that's what they sleep in now, you know? Or you can sew the hands closed too, but the knots are a little bit more obvious. Now I've had patients that had gotten really crafty. If they really want to keep sucking their thumb, they're going to find a way. So they would pull it off their head and they'd be naked basically and sucking their thumb in their bed. That's not going to work too well. But I had some grandparents that would actually turn it into like a onesie and they would sew it shut <laughs> so that... They can't take it off. Of course, they can't go to the bathroom at night. So I don't know about that, but most kids don't have to, you know, but they, or they'd put like snaps on it. So it was a little less, a little more difficult to take it off. Um, but you know, you can get real creative with this if you really need to. Now it becomes more like a punishment, but usually just having that, those knots in their mouth reminds them, that, oh, I'm not supposed to do this, you know? But um, yeah, lots of good suggestions. Again, these are all free suggestions for the parent. So they don't have to, what you don't want to do and with a two, three or four year old is be like, yeah, you have to buy this product and you have to wear it because you're taking it too far. Let them try positive reinforcement, the not method. I don't believe in negative things like the Mavala stop because I did use that for my son. So my son, after the bottle habit, you know, after we got rid of that, <laughs> oral habits are oral habits. Once you have them, it's really hard to get rid of them. It's like a Freud thing. So he went on to finger it wasn't finger nail biting it was more like cuticle biting but it was also finger nail biting and his fingers were like wrecked and it was like a, a nervous thing like he would do it at school more when he was like stressed or nervous or it was a hard assignment he'd bite on it um so when we were I think it was first grade we would initially we tried the Malvala stop which is that paint on fingernail polish you can get it from ebay i think you can get it from amazon it tastes bitter it's super nasty that's been around for like 40 50 years i remember my little brother used to use it um, it is, the problem is, is that he just wouldn't eat lunch. He wouldn't eat anymore because it, it was on his fingers, right? And you'd have to pick up your fingers in order to eat your food, like a sandwich or something. So he just stopped eating lunch at school. He lost a ton of weight. So that was off, off the table. So we stopped doing the Mavala stop. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it's nasty and it's just negative reinforcement. You know, it's like the hot sauce method. Mm, doesn't usually work. Um, and we went on to getting... You know, the kinesthesi, kinesthesiology, I can't say that word, the tape that they sell at CVS that's meant for like athletes where they like kind of tape up their muscles. Um, you can tell I don't run marathons or anything. We get the really narrow stuff and we let them pick a color. We had it in all different colors. Um, it's better than band-aids because um, it's fun. And he would have like green one day or purple one day or, you know, red one day. And of course he, he didn't mind in first grade walking around with this tape on his fingers. Um, it actually, he liked it because it gave him grip to like play ball at lunch and, you know, play ball at school. But we'd wrap his fingers in that and that really helped. And of course, he'd take a bath at night. We'd pull it off and put new ones on. But um, that helped a lot um, as well. So, OK, so you try all this. If all of this doesn't work and this, is, of course, is free. You're not charging the parent for this kind of guidance. This could be something where you make a YouTube video and post it. Um, which of course will bring lots of patients to your office if you're a knowledgeable person on this topic. So um, from there, the parents tried everything. They're like, doc, it's just not working. You know, I tried A, B, and C, we tried this, you know. Okay, then we move on to the next method, which would be what I call a tooth pillow. And the tooth pillow is a healthy, like we talked about healthy ways to remove the habit, but still get the satisfaction of the habit, you know, replacement. So. If all the other ways didn't work and it really needs to be something in their mouth, then I recommend using one of the various different appliances that I talked about. And I said, I'm not going to name them, but you can go into my YouTube and find them. It's not that hard. Um, you can also go into my book and find them. Um, I call them tooth pillows. They're obviously have other names. There's a couple of different companies. If you're a doctor and you're listening to this, most of the companies do require that you take a certification course in order to dispense this product that probably costs like three bucks. Um, lab fees are going to vary from as low as $50 to as much as a couple hundred dollars for one of these suckers that probably cost $3 to produce in China. Um, you want to make sure obviously you're getting one that's silicone free, BPA free, you know, don't get one that's obviously made in China. That makes me really nervous. But, uh, 
I want to make sure there's there's some that are better than others. There is one that doesn't require a certification course. The one that I think is best does require a certification course. Um, but, you know, that's up to you to work that out. But tooth pillows are good. Um, they aren't custom, so you don't have to take an impression or a scan. You can stock them in your office in various sizes. Sometimes they come in various colors as well. Like I said, prices are going to range from 50 to a couple hundred dollars. That's your lab fee. That's not what you're charging the patient because you're charging the patient for habit um, habit therapy, which is, I believe is D8210 or D8220 for your insurance billing code. If you are billing insurance, keep in mind, I would highly recommend you pre-auth this because it doesn't always get covered by insurance. Um, and if it does, sometimes it gets pulled from the ortho. So you want to make sure that the patients, the parents know if it's pulling from the ortho, you know, lifetime max, um, they may not have anything left for their phase one and phase two later or their ortho later or may have a lot less so you want to make sure that they know that because your ucr fees might be different from the insurance fees so just make sure you, i've seen a lot of parents get really pissed off about that so you need to really know what, where the money's coming from if you are billing insurance um so do that most doctors are charging i'd say between 300 and 500 for this removable or fixed habit therapy, definitely removable would be a little bit less. You know, obviously if they are, it's so you're explaining to the patient and the parent that this is a healthy appliance that they can put in their mouth when they feel the need to suck their thumb or use a passy or something like that, that actually promotes healthy growth. So it helps to remind the tongue where to go and they're gonna, it's best to, to actually sleep in it um, over time, but until they can work their way up. And I have a ton of videos on how to do this, so I'm not gonna get into it too much. But obviously you're gonna get started um, small, use it in your mouth for maybe one TV show, then one movie, and once you can successfully keep it in for that, then you try the nighttime, and it might fall out at night initially. But you're developing the healthy muscles that will also help to remodel your bones in a, the healthy way. So um, they're really good products. I definitely recommend them. Um, I had one kid that, not the kid, the older kid, but my younger child, my daughter did use them. We didn't know about it with my son. Um, but great product definitely beyond that if you're not successful with that and we've gotten to age at this point six or seven then we might need to get into a more fixed appliance which would be something like a fixed or removable um, tongue crib or thumb crib palatal expanders etc those are going to require full orthodontic re records and an impression or a scan so the kid needs to be old enough to be able to handle that because it's a little more traumatic if they're not ready so i think seven is usually a little bit better you can try the tooth pillow up into that and if the product, if the child is older, you're probably going to go ahead and bill D8060, D8050, which is, you know, your phase one orthodontic interceptive treatment, which will wipe out their, their ortho um, coverage usually, because usually I'm going to charge 2,500 to 3,500 for that. Um, and usually most people's insurance is, you know, 1,500 to 2,500. So you just got to let them know you do phase one now, you're still going to need phase two later, and that's going to be cash price, you know, around $5,000 to $6,000. So they need to be prepared. They will not have insurance anymore if they do that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything about how to remove oral habits starting at age two. But again, amazing practice builder for your practice. You're going to get in, if you start marketing and creating content and blogs and YouTube videos and how-to videos, yes, maybe it takes a little time like I'm doing here, but in time, if you post them and you work with somebody who knows how to do marketing, you know, um, and I have a lot of people that I work with that are amazing for this, just getting the word out that you are an expert on this and this is a service that you offer for free, at least initially, you know, um, you can offer guidance to new families and existing families will eventually get you a lot of new young patients in your practice, which is what you need to grow your practice. Um, and it builds trust and rapport and stuff like that. All right. Thanks so much.